Captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. Mm -hmm. and David sent forth the third part of the people under the hand of Joab, and the third part under the hand of Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and a third part under the hand of Ittai, the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. Right? So look what he said. He said, Listen, don't even worry about it. It's for sure. I'm going to go with you myself. Like, we all about to go down. You think he want to say that? No, but he got to say that. I mean, okay, look, I'm finally giving in. We're about to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go down there myself. Right? Watch what happened now. But the people answered, you shall not go for it. Right? They said, no, 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 no. That don't make sense. Why wouldn't it make sense for the king to go down? I mean, it's the king, right? We're about to go to war. Why wouldn't it make sense for the king to go down to war? For if we flee away, they will not care for us. Neither if half of us die will they care for us. But now that you are worth 10,000 of us, therefore, now it is better that you succor us or that, that you succor us out of the city. Right? Succor, you're talking about help. You know what I'm saying? It's better, it's, it's better off that you help us out of the city. You know what I'm saying? Just help us get there. We'll be all right. We'll take care of it. Because at the end of the day, they ain't thinking about us. Like, I can die right now. Right? Guess who they are? The king. So they'll kill hundreds, thousands. They'll keep killing us. Until they get to you. However, if you out there, they just get you. Whole thing over. Right? He said, you worth 10,000 of us. Because if it's us, you know what I'm saying? You let us. They ain't thinking about us. They'll let us. If they see you, they'll leave us behind. Let us go out there and fight this battle. Right? Before they mess around, come up with a scheme where they can get to you quickly and we lose the whole thing. Right? So that's how the men think. They, they put David above them. Right? They serve, they serve David. Let's keep going. What else? And the king said unto them, what seems you best, I will do. So you see, easily, he backed off of that thing. Oh, whatever y'all say. You know what I'm saying? Whatever y'all say is best, that's what we're going to go with. Because David didn't want to go out there. That's his son. Right? Watch what he said next, though. He said, what seemeth you best, that's what I'll do. Keep going. And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. Uh-huh. And the king commanded Joab and, Ab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, deal gently for my sake with the young men, even with Absalom. Mm-hmm. And all the people heard when the king gave us all the captain's charge concerning Absalom. Mm -hmm. So the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim, where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David. And there was there a great slaughter that day of 20,000 men. All right, so now it's time for war. Before they went, what did David say? Deal gently with the young men and my son. He said, for my sake, deal, deal gently with Especially my boy. Right? He just said for my sake. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't go too hard on him. And don't mess with my boy, please. Right? He told the men. And they go out there to war. A lot of people get killed. A lot of people get killed. He said it's a great slot in that day. They don't got time for all that when they try to kill them. A lot of people get killed. Right? It's a great slot in that day. Watch this. For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country, and the wood devoured more people than the, the that day than the sword devoured. So now they fighting in the woods. And they saying, they saying the woods is killing more people than, than the sword dog. So in other words, you know what I'm saying, you got trees, you slide through, it's you know, you never know, it's little pits and all type of stuff. They 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 riding they uh they they mules and horses and going all through. People falling and dying, getting hit by trees and dying, all that. So the woods itself is killing more people. Probably animals too. They kill it. It's killing more people than, than they killing each other. Right? Let's see. And Absalom met the servants of David. Uh huh. And Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak. Absalom rolled upon what? A mule. Uh oh. I don't know what he got down. I don't know why he rolled. Why would he be riding on top of that? All right, let's hear about it. And the mule went under thick boats. Something's about to make us perk up. I'm like, okay, hold on. What's going on here? Let's see. He said, and the mule did what? And the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak. And a, of a great oak? And his head caught hold of the oak. Uh-oh. And he was taken up between the heaven and the earth. He had taken up between what? The heaven and the earth. Oh, my goodness. And the mule that what was under him went away. And then the mule that was under him, it kept going. Let's hear about it. And a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. He saw Absalom doing what? Hanged in an oak. Goodness gracious. Man, but hanging from an oak tree. All right, let's see. 
And Joab said unto the men that told him, And behold, thou saw him, and why did you not smite him there to the ground? Right, so Joab was looking like, you saw him. Why are you telling me that you darn saw him? Joab, a killer like you. I'm saying, like, what? I don't understand why you sitting there telling me that you saw the man. Mm -mm, we doing Bible study. Have a seat. Or go back downstairs. Right, so it's, it's in there, it's in there looking like, I don't understand why you telling me. What, what that got to do with me? You know what needs to happen? You should have killed him. And what he said? He said, you should have killed the man. Let's see. And I would have given thee ten shekels of sil silver and a girdle. He said, I'd easily hit you off for that. And the man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, yet would I not put forth my hand against the king's son. Remember, they put David above them. Right? It's Joab. This jo Joab the commander, though. Right? So it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying, this, this man is in a tough position. Because on one hand, it's like, Nah, David said, don't don't touch the man, right? Then on the other hand, it's like, oh, well, hold on. This is my commander. He's telling me I should have got him, you know what I'm saying, got the payday. So he's looking like, man, look, even if I got 10,000 of them things, there's no way I'm putting my hand, my, put, putting myself against David like that. that. That don't make no sense, right? Let's hear about it. Let's see what Joe have to. For in our hearing, the king charged you and Abishai, <clears throat> Abishai and Ittai, saying, beware that none touch the young man absolutely. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I should have wrought falsehood against my own life. For there is no matter hid from the king, and you yourself would have set yourself against me. Right? So he's saying, listen, that's a setup. Right? He's saying, look, you give me 10,000. <laughs> I mean, he said, you give me 1,000 shekels. I take, if I took 10,000, I wouldn't do that thing. You know why? Because then the king would be mad at me. And guess who we going to send that to me? Yo darn butt. He looking like Joe Abbey. You know you would kill me. As soon as the king say, oh, no, nah, go ahead and get him. He's like, no, nah, that don't make no sense. So the man is not dumb. He's like, no, nah, that's not happening. I told you where Absalom was. You know what I'm saying? You do what you want to do. I just, I'm just letting you know where he is. Right? Let's see what Joab do. I told y'all Joab would kill it all. Then said Joab, I may not tarry with us with, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive. While he was what? Yet alive in the middle of the oak. He took how many darts? Three. Put him right through that man darn hard. And guess what? The man was still darn alive. Let's see what else happened. And ten young men that bore Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. And Joab blew the trumpet. How many? Ten. Then ten young men walked around the man and then killed him. What else happened? And Joab blew the trumpet. And that didn't just kill him, just kill him. I mean, the book says smote him. Keep going. And Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel, for Joab held back the people. Mm -hmm. And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the woods, mm -hmm. and laid a very great heap of stones upon him, and all Israel fled, everyone to his tent. So hold on, hold on, hold on. They took Absalom, and they did what with him? They put a great heap of stones on him. What did it say before that? And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the woods. They put him inside of a great pit. And then what they put over the pit? Stone. Goodness gracious. I don't know what this is talking about. Keep going. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's dale. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name, and it is called unto this day Absalom's place. Randy, you stupid. <coughs> He said the old he said the old African blowing darts. Uh, what do you say? The old African blowing darts cliche. <laughs> Keep going. What else are we working with? Then said Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, let me now run and bear the king tidings. Right? So Ahimeaz is like, oh, we gotta go tell the king about this. Right? He let me go ahead and take off and go tell him. You know, everything. You know, he's just, you always gotta take the fastest man. You know, what I'm saying you go out and then you run and go get the information. When they say tidings, what's tidings? That's news. So I gotta go get the news over to the king. All right. So him, he asked, said, okay, let me go ahead and do this. You know, what I'm saying let me go and get on foot. You know, what I'm saying I can I can make it to the king in no time. Let's see what else happened. How that the Lord has avenged him of his enemies. Mm -hmm. And Joab said unto him, You shall not bear tidings this day, but you shall bear tidings another day. All right, so he said, mm, You go ahead and sit back. You know what I'm saying? As soon as he told him to sit back, watch what he told the next one. 
but this day you shall bear no tidings because the king's son is dead. Then said Joab to Cushai, go tell the king what you have seen. And Cushai bowed himself to Joab and ran. Right? So now Cushai was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Joab said, I want you to tell him. You know what I'm saying? So Cushai go. But watch this. Who went first? I know, but who actually went first? Who shot? All right, he read. Then said Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, yet again to Joab, but howsoever, but howsoever let me, I pray thee, also run after Cushai. And Joab said, why will you run, my son, seeing that you have no tidings ready? All right, so Cushai already took <coughs> off, right? And after that, then you see, you see uh, uh, Ahimeaz, he looking like, well, no, let me go ahead and go too. You know what I'm saying? But watch this. But howsoever said he, let me run. And he said unto him, heart. run. Then Ahimeaz ran by the way of the plain and overran Cushai. Mm -hmm. And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate unto the wall, the and heart. lift up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man running alone. Mm -hmm. And the watchman cried and told the king, and the king said, if he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. Now who left first? Cushai. Cushai left first, right? So now, now... It gets to the point where we looking from David's point of view. And they like, oh, we see somebody running. David was like, well, if it's, if it's somebody by themselves, that means, you know what I'm saying, he coming with some news. Because that's how it worked. You got one man that got to run ahead. So he's looking like, oh, he got some news that's, that's coming. David already, you know, you know David's been waiting by the door, waiting for something to happen. He's like, oh, that must be the news right there. Is somebody running by themselves? Okay, that must be the news. Right? So now they running. And let's see what happened next. Who left first? Kusha. Kusha. Okay, let's see. <laughs> And he came apace and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running. And the watchman called unto the porter and said, Behold, another man running alone. And the king said, He also brings tidings. Uh oh, so now he said, I see two. He right? He's like, Man, it must be two people bringing tidings. But what's the first one? Let me see. And the watchman said, Me thinketh the running. Me thinketh. We think it the running of the foremost is like the running of a hemi ass. He said the running, the one that's running in the front, that man looked like he running just like a hemi ass be running. But who left first? The son of Zadok. The man who left first was Kushai. What'd that mean then? I mean, he got outran. <laughs> that boy, hemi ass had wheels. Boy, that boy, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? That boy, Burton, what'd that remind of her? Uh, Y'all sure run the two? I don't know. Let's think about it. And the watchman, oh, you probably got it, actually. Let's see. Keep going. And Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, and the king said, He is a good man and comes with good news. And Ahimeaz called and said unto the king, All is well. He's a good man and comes with what? <coughs> good news. He's a good man and comes with what? Good news. That's all we just read about. Darn good news. What's another word for good news? Gospel. Hmm. <laughs> These people don't know what they're doing reading. We sitting there reading. We thinking we reading about Absalom dying. Whole time we reading the darn gospel. Grab John chapter 20 for me. It's John chapter 20 verse 1. Whole book talking about the man. He said that's a good man. He must be coming with what? Some good darn news. See what happened when you got some good news. It's John chapter uh, 20, verse 1. The first day of the week comes Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre and seeing the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Seeing the what? The stone. Hold on, there was a stone in front of the sepulchre? Sepulchre was like what, like a pit? And then they put a stone over it. I don't know where Absalom got that thing from. I mean, because I don't know. I, they found a pit in the, in the woods. Then they threw Absalom in there. And you know what they did after that? They covered that thing with stone. I don't know where y'all sure. Y'all sure was like, mm, you know what? I can't just die however I want to die. That thing got to line up with the scripture. That thing got to line up with the scripture every time. Let's keep going. Let's see what else we can find up here. Then she run, she ran and came to Simon Peter. Uh-oh, so she ran and she came to Simon Peter. 
and to the other disciple whom Yahushua loved and said unto them. And then she came to the other disciple. It's two disciples. She said, first, let me come to Simon Peter. Then she said, let me come to the other disciple whom Yahushua loved. And then what happened? And said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. We don't know what happened to the man. She went there. She like, it was supposed to be a stone here, because I know when they killed him, they, they covered him with a stone. They put him in the pit and covered him with a stone. Just like Absalom. That's what she thinks. She's like, man, it's just like Absalom. Then they rolled it off, and then she was like, well, the man ain't even there. So she ran, she told Simon Peter, and she told the other disciple that y'all she would love. And what else happened? So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. Who she tell first? Peter. Who got there first? The other disciple. <laughs> Just like a hemi ass. <laughs> Peter is looking like Kusha. You know what I'm saying? Yo, she and the angel could have been looking like, I don't know, the form of the man running looked like the disciple that y'all would love. The one in the back, that's probably Kusha. I mean, Peter. Right? Grab Romans chapter uh, 10 for me. It's Romans chapter 10, verse 8. I'm going to do a little bit of talking. The gospel is absent. It's Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. Uh -huh. That is the word of faith which we preach. Mm -hmm. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Yahushua and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. We talked about that. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. For the scripture says, whosoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. But there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. All right, that got that when it come to when it come to these people running their mouth talking about Gentile can't get in there. That got that you ain't read this book then, all right? Whole book talk about it. we ain't just got to go to the New Testament. I'll take you to the Old Testament. All right, you've been reading Isaiah, huh? You see it, all right? That thing very clear. What is it, Isaiah 50, 58? That thing very clear. Hey, get in, and be sons. You know what I'm saying? You kick your butt to the darn side. You ain't doing the right thing. Let's see. Keep going. For there is no difference. Oh wait. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Okay. And how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? Mm -hmm. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Mm -hmm. As it is written, how beautiful are the how beautiful are what of the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace? Uh huh. And bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not. He said that's a good God. man. That means he's bringing good tidings. Book telling you right here how beautiful are the feet of the people that come with good news and bring glad tidings. But they have not what? All obeyed the gospel. That was the gospel that they had bring. They had bring the gospel. The son died. They was going to David and telling him that his son died. What's the gospel for us? The son died. Whole book got to talk about the man. We looking at him. We think we reading something, but it never clicks for us. Grab uh, grab John chapter <coughs> five for me. The man sitting here trying to tell us the whole time y'all been making a mess out of the book. He been trying to tell us that whole time you been sitting here making a darn mess out of the book. You think you get it? This is John chapter five. What what verse I want? Not twenty five. What on, what is it, 35? John chapter 5, verse uh, 35. Is that what I want? Mm, what you looking for? Search your scripture. Uh, you are looking for 39. 39? It's John chapter 5, verse 39. Watch what it say. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. He's saying, you think, we've been saying, what scripture? A lot of people get it made. The whole book is scripture? Scripture got to be the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. If he say search the scripture in the new, and he walking around and the New Testament is about him walking around, how that's going to be New Testament that he talking about? <laughs> the man sitting here telling you search the scripture, so what are you talking about? Okay. He's talking about Old Testament. He's talking about the law, the prophets, the history, the Psalms, the Proverbs, right? 
He said, search, search all that. He said, because inside of it, guess what you think you have? For in them you think you have eternal life. Uh-huh. And they are they which testify of me. The whole thing you've been reading this and talking about me. The whole time that thing been talking about me. But guess what? And you will not come to me that you might have life. I so I'm sitting here. He's sitting here like, I'm right here in front of you. Whole thing you reading, whole thing you think you preaching, you talking about, it's been talking about me. But when I show up in the flesh, y'all won't come to me. Y'all don't want nothing to do with the boy. Right? He trying to explain to you like this is the word. What y'all been talking about is talking about me. Y'all thought y'all were reading about Absalom? What you think God cared about a dog Absalom for? The man already told you, you know what? You're going to have son. You're going to have a son. Right? And your son is going to be his kingdom forever. He said, your son is going to be his kingdom forever. And if he rebel against me, guess what? I'm going to punish him. But I ain't going to leave his side. You thought that was talking about Absalom? That was y'all sure trying to go like, what you, what you thought all this was talking about? Oh, no. Nah. When you saw Absalom die, and he, they brought good news, they are talking, the, talking about the son. Not the son. They are trying to talk about the son. Let's hear about it. Let's see. Go to, um, actually, what we want. Grab, uh, grab Acts. Acts chapter 10, verse 36. Let's see how much we can line up right here. Whole book. It's easy money, too. The whole book. Acts 10, 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yahushua, he is Lord of all. That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judah and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Mm -hmm. How God anointed Yahushua of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, mm -hmm. who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That's right. For God was with him. Mm -hmm. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the, of the Jews and in Jerusalem. He's trying to let you know. He says, we've seen all of it, right? But what else happened? Whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Who they did what to? Slew and hanged on a tree. <coughs> I don't know where it came from, where Absalom was going through the darn woods. And guess what? Just got snatched up by a darn oak. And he is hanging in between what? Heaven and earth. The man was hanging in between heaven and earth on the oak. Man was hanging on the tree. Man saw him. He was looking like, man, I saw Absalom. Oak just snatched him up. You know what I'm saying? He was right there, right for the picking. Joy was like, man, why are you, why are you telling me? <laughs> he like, that thing ain't gonna, why are you telling me? Why didn't you kill him? Why did he hit you up with something? He was like, nah, that don't make no sense for me to mess around and kill him. Because guess what? If I kill him, then David's gonna be mad at me. And when David's mad at me, he's gonna send you after me. Then you gonna kill me your darn self. He's like, man, look, I ain't got time. Uh, Joab told you, like, I ain't got time to listen to it. Go back real quick, Joe. Why Joab tell him? Joab would tell him, I ain't got time to listen to you, what you're talking about right now. Find that for me. I don't know where it's at. It's 2 Samuel chapter 18. Watch where you tell him he ain't got time. Joab would kill him. Yeah, he'd be tripping. Joab would different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Joab would different. You, know, you got them people, we still got them people today. We got, like, killers. You know what I'm saying? Like, real, you know what I'm saying? Like, real life, like, these people will just knock you off. You know what I'm saying? One of our friends. And got, got into an argument outside of Dottie's. And the dude just, you know what I'm saying? Like shot, shot him and his, his mom and sister in the head. Like that's crazy. Like some people are just nuts. Like they just, you know what I'm saying? Just off. Oh, some people are just killers. They're not right. You know what I'm saying? Little things happen. It's just not right. You know what I'm saying? They just, you know what I'm saying? They freak out and do it. You know what I'm saying? The dude that killed Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? You sure y'all saw that video? Yeah, I saw it. Man, it's nuts. It's some people are just nuts, like just loony. I ain't seen some crazy stuff. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never seen nobody get no. Thank God I ain't never seen nobody get their head blown off and nothing crazy like that. But I ain't seen some people get their face just put on the curb and somebody just jump on the back of their face. Like you gotta be nuts. You gotta like you gotta be crazy you wanna do that type of harm to a person. To be able to shoot a person. They fall down, you run. You come back, shoot them some more. Dome them. Then come back, and then come back and kick them after you dome them. And then finally run off. That's insane. 
Right? What, what motivates that? <coughs> crazy. Matter of fact, they picked the man up in a crazy home. Yeah. yeah, when they found him. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure all that got strategy to it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, at the end of the day, that stuff is crazy. It's nuts. You got to ask yourself, like, what, what, what can motivate that type of thing? You know what I'm saying? That's what, you know what I'm saying? That's people getting all these conspiracy theories from, or what they call it conspiracy theories. It's like, man, y'all y'all don't know the history of this country? Some of that stuff ain't really far off. You know what I'm saying? Like, before it happened, everybody was like, no, man, I think the government did it. You know what I'm saying? I tried to be easy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's like, ah. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, let's let some of the stuff fall down first. You know what I'm saying? Because I know how they, I know how they set you up. You know what I'm saying? They be knowing who did it right away. The, the news, the cops, the police, they be knowing who did it right away. But what they do is they try to put you in a hole to where you jump off on a conspiracy theory, then they hit you with the opposite and be like, ah, shoot down your conspiracy theory. So now everybody just like, everybody want to just be like, okay, let's just go with the police say, because clearly we were obviously wrong. That's how, that's how they try to get you. So sometimes you just got to slow down and be like, all right, you play your hand first. Right? And sure enough, they came back. The first hand they played was, I can't believe it. We were just supposed to have a meeting with them. Right, they start reading. I mean, I, the, the, the chief, I just, uh, I just got a text from Nipsey. We supposed to have a meeting with him. I ain't saying that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying the police got something to do. I don't know. I'm just saying that, you know, that's the hand that they played. First thing they came out with, such a shame. You know what I'm saying? We had just supposed to have a meeting with the man. Not to mention, same police department just beat up and killed, you know what I'm saying, some black folks in, in L.A., you know what I'm saying, like a couple weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? And they hot in the water about that. Suddenly, I guess they maybe they care now. I don't know. I, I know the history of the L.A. The, uh, the LAPD. Let me tell you something. They ain't got a history of caring. Not a whole lot. Right? They ain't got a history of caring. Not a whole lot. But let's just say, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they do. You know what I'm saying? They pull it out. They're like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, we were just supposed to meet. He just reached out to have a meeting with us. And it's just such a shame. The captain said, I had to look at it twice. When I saw Nipsey Hussle, I thought it was a hoax. Maybe serious. A lot of us felt the same way, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe, maybe, maybe he being honest. You know what I'm saying? So then people come out. Once he played that hand, what the people come out and say? See, does this still look like the LAPD set him up? All right. So now people argue about that. Then later on to come out, it was somebody from the Rolling Sixties that got him. Guess where Nipsey is from? Rolling Sixties. Right? But then the hood let out some information that everybody else didn't know. He is a snitch. That's what they say. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't think nobody got no paperwork on it. But so far, that's what they say. It came out around the same time. The hood was saying, homeboy, a snitch. And if he told him he is a snitch, he left, came back, and that's when it happened. Right? So now people are like, okay, if he is a snitch, that's what happened if she told him a snitch. And then it's just his own, you know what I'm saying? His own people just shot him up. See, the hood can't never had nothing. They always killing people now, so it turned into that conversation, right? That take the heat off of any other possibility. That's why I'm like, oh, y'all don't really know the history of this country. Like y'all don't, y'all ain't never, y'all ain't never heard of COINTELPRO. Y'all don't know that it was FBI informants, aka snitches, that took down the Black Panthers. It wasn't FBI agents. A lot of people, that's what a lot of people think. A lot of people think it was FBI, like I went to the FBI and then I went undercover. You know what I'm saying? Like I went to school, I joined the FBI, I finished my training. And after I finished my training, then I went undercover and I said, hey, I'm going to pretend like I'm a Black Panther. That's what a lot of people think happened. No. No. That didn't happen. They were informants. They tried to give them a pretty name. So in the documentaries, you don't really know what they're saying. That's a snitch. That's somebody that they caught doing something. And they said, you know what? I'm going to put your black butt in jail. However, if you just keep doing what you're doing and go over there and tell them people that you still with them and just tell me everything that's going on, you'll be all right. But you know what that turns into? When J. Edgar Hoover, you know what I'm saying? J. Edgar Hoover, he ran the FBI at the, at the time. He's the one responsible for threatening Martin Luther King and a lot of people say responsible for killing Martin Luther King. He's the one responsible for uh, a lot of people say killing uh, Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, all these big names, yeah. right? Making a lot of the boys sick, putting a lot of them boys in jail. Like, he's the one who's orchestrated it. He got documents uh, saying we need to stop the black what? I'm sorry. 
So you notice each time one of these men that we just discussed, I'm talking about the old timers, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, each time one of them rise to a certain level where people will be like, yeah, and they start changing their tune, them boys drop all of a sudden, right? Malcolm X was in a position where he was like, you know what I'm saying, all black, all black. Not everybody was rolling with that. We had knock you out, you come put your hands on us. Not everybody was rolling with that. Then all of a sudden he is like, wait a minute. I go over here, these Muslims... Is white too. And he came back with a different message. Came back a little more friendly. People might buy into that. He gone. Right? He done after that. Martin Luther King, similar. Martin Luther King was like nonviolence. You know what I'm saying? Let's just get some workers' unions. You know what I'm saying? Let the let the government just subsidize us a little bit. Give us jobs. All right? Towards the end of that thing, his tune changed a little bit. He's like, you know what, we're about to march on Capitol Hill this time, and they're going to have to give us a check. Literally is what his words were. Right after that speech, man, get shot. Don't. And guess what they say in both of those cases? Who killed them? People from the own crew is who killed them. Is what they say. Right? You remember Malcolm X? What was Malcolm X doing? He was about to give a speech. He was, spe he was giving a speech. And then somebody yelled out what? It was something like, get your hands out of my pocket. Then everybody started looking around. And then some man came up that was supposedly a Black Panther and shot him. And you know what the story that came out was? That it was the it was uh, Elijah Muhammad mad that Malcolm X was saying different stuff. And so he had him shot. Right? Now, I'm not saying that didn't happen. Because there's some stories about <coughs> Elijah Muhammad being a government informant. Right? All I'm saying is that works perfectly for somebody up top who might want something like that to happen. Who's trying to stop a black messiah from happening. Yeah. All I'm saying is, it's I right. don't know if that's any different He's today. He's definitely serious about changing like the way his neighborhood was. All I'm saying, I don't know how different that is today. I don't know if like, I don't know, people in power just had like a sudden change of heart. He's definitely trying to stop all that gay stuff and make stuff look way nicer. You know I, mean? I mean, I got me a snitch. I should say the man's a snitch. Got me a snitch. He from the 60s. He crazy. He bout it. Maybe he, you know what I'm saying? Maybe he like Nipsey, maybe he don't. If she tell him, you know what I'm saying? He, Nipsey, you know, Nipsey said, I ain't crazy. Well, you a snitch. Get on, well, you ain't welcome around here. Get on from around here. I know what you doing. Right? Maybe they say, you know what? I wouldn't let, you know what I'm saying? Maybe this is how the FBI work. I wouldn't let nobody say nothing like that to me. And maybe he go off the handle and handle some business. And maybe that's exactly what they want. In 2013, they had an article and they released over 5,000 snitches, informants, that they allowed to do crimes. You read the article, and you know, you're like, off of the headline, 5,000, you know what I'm saying? You probably like, okay, they probably let them like run stoplights and all that. You read the headline, and you be like, so what kind of crimes? Oh, we don't keep a record. We don't keep a record. We keep a record that they did a crime. We don't keep track of what kind of crimes. Like, we don't know if they misdemeanors or felonies or murders. Or, I don't know. We don't keep a record. <coughs> you, know, you know how this came, brought, came out? It ain't, like, it ain't like they turned out this information just because they wanted to. It was a mob boss. Not a Hebrew, I can tell you that much. It was a mob boss. He told on them. Well, some of the people told on them. He was like, oh, no, they was letting me run my operation. Selling drugs, you know what I'm saying, running rackets. They just let me run my operation. As long as I kept telling them about these other people. Informants. Just because you're an informant don't mean you low level. He was a boss. Running stuff. We can't trust none of this. So we can't trust these people on the news. We can't trust these people, these politicians. We can't trust any of them could be against us. Could be getting paid. Or could have something hanging over their head. Where the, the government is like, if you don't do it the way I want you to do it, you lose everything you got. And it's a much easier position to be in if you got a lot and the government can take it away from you. For them, it's much easier. All right? So, no, I'm not saying, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know if the man killed him for the government or not. All I'm saying is, you ain't about to get me to roll that out. Why? Why should I feel, hold on. Why should I feel bad when y'all confirm that y'all did stuff like this? Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I be skeptical? Why shouldn't I ask questions? 
That ain't a conspiracy theory. That's a that's a logical theory. Y'all done did it. I'm not about to let these people put you, you know what I'm saying? They turn us against each other. Be like, man, you got people posting on there. If I see one more conspiracy theory about Nipsey, just let his family rest. Man, look, no disrespect to the family. That thing don't make sense to me to sit here and like rule it out, though. That's crazy. I'm going to rule it out? Maybe they did kill Dr. Uh, Sebi or Sebi, whatever his name is. You know, I don't rock with that. I don't rock, now listen, I don't rock with the Sebi man. You know what I'm saying? How you going to tell me, oh yeah, eat right. Don't get me started on the Sebi man. <laughs> Yo, oh, no, eat right. Don't eat vegetables. It gets rid of pus. Oh yeah, but then smoke. Smoke a big old fat blunt of weed. He smokes? Yeah, he yeah. smokes. That's, that's, part of his, that's part of his whole thing. Yeah. Smoke weed, eat all vegetables. Nah, that's smoking to tell your lungs up. And tell your darn lungs up. <laughs> At least cigarette got a darn filter on it. You get you a blunt, that thing ain't got no filter. You just, that's pure smoke you inhaling. That's nuts. I take it better if you say, okay, well, eat the weed or something like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, you know what I'm saying, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I can take that. You gonna tell me to smoke weed? You gonna sit here and tell me how, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, don't get me started. He don't get me started on the seven minutes. But maybe he was on to something. They did say that, you know what I'm saying, he he was he was uh, brought into uh brought into court about about claiming that he cured uh AIDS or cancer. AIDS. One or two. They're saying like his patients like tested negative for whatever they had before. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, they say they say they say that he was responsible for curing them. And because he made that claim, they brought him into court about it. Yeah. And he walked out of the court. Without losing that case. Yeah. Well, he just talked about two cases. Yeah, multiple cases. Yeah. yeah. And he said he you know what I'm saying? And that whole thing was swept under the rug, is what they say. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't know the whole story behind it, but maybe that is something that somebody's trying to hide. Who knows? They and maybe that. Tried, they said he tried to go uh, talk to uh, Oprah. Uh, oh, y'all know we don't trust no talk uh, Oprah. Oprah Ali. I mean, I know my uh, what, uh, what is the. What's it that? Uh, Farrakhan. Farrakhan? Yeah, they tried to go talk to him. And they. Farrakhan, we don't trust no Farrakhan. He definitely get paid. We don't trust no. We don't trust no. We don't trust no uh, Oprah. Uh -huh. Both of them. But now we definitely don't trust Farrakhan. Farrakhan. Like obvious. That thing crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know anybody who come from the Elijah Muhammad tree, you know you don't want you don't want to mess. Some of them Muslims just don't know what they talking about. You know what I'm saying? They just you know what I'm saying? They like they got the passion. They just they don't know what they don't know what they doing. Farrakhan though, he know what he talking about. He know what he doing. And that man in somebody's pockets. But that's a whole other story. The moral of the story is some of these people darn crazy. How many people nuts and they got it and they'll do it. And Joe was one of them darn people. Right? He was nuts. And he'd do it. He'd knock your butt off. Friend or foe. You know what I'm saying? Don't matter who you is, boy. You make you getting that boy away. That boy had knock him block off quick. You know what I'm saying? Won't even think twice about it. Go ahead and get to that part where you told me I ain't got time to sit here and listen to Watch this. Then Joab said, I may not tarry with the tarry thus with thee. You know what Terry mean? See me I, I can't sit here and wait. You know what I'm saying? I can't sit here and wait with you. I'm wasting my time. He said, you wasting my darn time? Watch this. Go ahead. Go, go to the verse before it. Otherwise, I should have brought falsehood against my own life. This is the man telling him, it don't make no sense for me to kill him. That's crazy. David to come against me and he'll send you to kill me. Right? He said, otherwise, I would have brought fa falsehood against what? My own life. Uh-huh. For there is no matter hid from the king. And you yourself would have set yourself against me. Uh huh. Then said Joab. Now you know you know he made a point. Cause Joab ain't said had nothing to say after that. What Joab say after that? Then Joab said, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. In other words, man, I'm done talking to you. Get these darts. Get out of my face. And then kill them. That man's like, he's sick. He's not like, he's a killer. He's like, man, I'm coming here for a job. Like, it's the mission for me. I had my mindset before I got here. I don't understand, like, winning a war and then letting the king live. Like, we don't do that. Letting the, letting the leader of the other battle. We don't do that. It don't make sense. It don't even feel fitting. Like, he's a, like, you have to understand, you have to put yourself in some of these people's psyche. Like, he goes to war all the time. And guess what happens? Every single time, he's I kill man. them all, and then I kill the man who on the other side. Like I, I kill them all time. and kill the man on the other side. I kill like so now this is the protocol. Yeah. You know, you know, you know you got somebody that's OCD, like my boss at work, she OCD. You know what I'm saying? Like she walked back, walk, walk, walk past one of our desks, and it's all like messed up. 
She'll literally stop everything she's doing and just start cleaning our desk. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Why don't you just put it in and just start cleaning the whole desk? My desk is yeah. Right? I be having to keep my thing clean just because of her. Because I don't like nobody touching my stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? You good? No, 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 no. <laughs> you good? You know what I'm saying? You all right? You know what I'm saying? That's how she is. She OCD. Like, no matter what's happening. You know what I'm saying? But it helps her and her boss. You know what I'm saying? Like, in, in the way that she is as a boss. Like, we go visit this whole other company. They they, they, they own company. They was hilarious to me. That, this is their own company. She's a boss in her company. We going to a different uh, company, and they got bosses, and we all in the room. There's bosses in the room, and we talking. So we at their company, and they being hospitable to us. They bring out some, I don't know, like some muffins and all that stuff. You know the stuff that the <coughs> corporate people do. So they bring out some muffins and all that stuff, some drinks and that. So we sitting there, and we have some of the drinks and still some muffins there. So then they, them, their bosses, bring in some of their employees to introduce themselves to us. So my boss, who's not the boss of the employees that just walked in and didn't bring out these donuts herself, I mean these uh, muffins herself, she says, oh, come on in. No, help yourself to a donut. But she takes control. Like she, She's looking like that's just her. You know what I'm saying? So it's, in her mind, she's not looking like, she. in her mind, she's looking like this is just protocol. When somebody comes into the room and there's food right there, I take care of them. I make sure everything is in order. I make sure everybody's sitting in the right spot. That's completeness for her. She's looking at it like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when this happens, I have to make sure I go from here to here. It has to be complete. Otherwise, it doesn't feel right. That's how Joe app is. I get into a battle. That don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? It don't make sense. Oh, something finished. What do you mean he's still hanging? <laughs> I ain't got time to be talking to you. Let me finish. I got to finish it. He so he sticked the, the, the dark stone. You can imagine, you know what I'm saying? The book don't say it, but you can imagine. He probably like kind of realized what he did at that point. Step back, he's like, right, young, the young boys, y'all go ahead and finish him off. That thing got to do it. I ain't going to finish him off. Young boys, y'all go ahead and finish him off. Then the young boys, they, you remember the book said they smote him. Yeah. How many of them? Ten? Ten, Ten of them smote him. Y'all remember y'all sure? Yeah. When he is, when he is, oh, y'all remember when y'all sure was hanging on the tree? Oh, yeah. Y'all remember the people that was smiting him? Yeah. Even before he got on the tree. They smite them and talking crap to them. You don't remember that? Yeah. No, I didn't. It didn't give us a number. I didn't give us a number. You know, I would have lit that thing up. It gave us a number. You know what I'm talking about? I didn't give us a number. Well, that's what it is. <coughs> right? Same thing. We look at the thing. We see it all plays out. The whole book got to talk about the man. Whole book. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no way around it. We can look at it and we can think, okay, you know what? I'm reading about Absalom. You know what I'm saying? I'm reading about Joab. Right? Joab is just a brother. Right? Just like the just like uh just like the Jews. You know what I'm saying? Just like our people. They just a brother to y'all sure. Guess what? Your butt gotta go. We gotta get the son up out of here. That don't make no darn sense. For them it made sense. If we let him go, you know what I'm saying? Like if we let Yahoo Shua keep going, guess who's gonna come after us? The Romans. The Romans. Joe was like, man, if we let this man go. All these people are going to think they can come after uh, David. Everybody going to think they can just rise up after David. He said, no, we can't have that. Hey, wait, we got to complete this. So he killed the man. Keep going. Let's see what else we're working with. And the ten young men that bear Joab's armor come past about, the, come about, uh, about and smote Absalom and slew him. And Joab, what verse is that? 15. 15. Jump up to verse 8. For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country, and the wood devoured more people that day than the sword. Mm -hmm. And Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, mm -hmm. and his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. And the mule was under him, and the mule that was under him went away. One. Jump down to maybe 17. And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood. Yeah. And a very great heap of stones upon him. And all Israel fled, everyone to his tent. Mm -hmm. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar. He reared up for himself what? A pillar. So Absalom, he reared up. Who reared up for himself a pillar? Absalom. Why would Absalom put, why would the book even talk about that? For what reason? Let me see. Y'all sure had pillars. Y'all sure had pillars? Why do y'all sure have pillars though? Because he ain't had no son. You mean tell me y'all sure ain't had no kids? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
called on him. Yahushua ain't had no kids, so he had to get pillars. Yes. Let's see why Absalom ain't had uh, 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 well, Let's see why he had pillars. Now, Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's dale. Mm -hmm. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name. And it is called unto this day Absalom's place. He had a pillar to keep <coughs> the remembrance of his name. Let's see, Galatians. I think Galatians 2. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 7. Galatians chapter 2, verse 7. It's Galatians chapter 2, verse 7. But contrawise, contra when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, mm -hmm. as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, mm -hmm. for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars... Uh-oh. James, Cephas, and who? John. Seemed to be what? Who seemed to be pillars. That was y'all who was pillars. For what reason? Perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and that they unto the circumcision. All right. The whole reason was to preach the gospel. They can go out there and get the word out. To keep the remembrance of who? Yahushua. Trying to tell y'all, it's the gospel of Absalom that we're reading about. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1. The book says, Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. But guess what? The whole thing. Test five meat. Talking about Yahushua. It's 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1. Probably going to skip down. Let me grab me verse 1. Let me see. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day of the, the, day the Lord delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. Mm -hmm. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Mm -hmm. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. Mm -hmm. Jump on down to verse uh, 18. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. Mm -hmm. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. Mm -hmm. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Mm -hmm. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, as he recompensed me. Mm -hmm. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. Mm -hmm. For all his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. Mm -hmm. I was also upright before him and have kept myself from my iniquity. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight. Watch this. Go back to verse 1. And David said unto the, spoke unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. You saved me from violence. Okay, now jump on down. What verse do you leave off on? 24. 24? Go from 24 then? I was also upright before him. And he said, I was up, also upright before him. And, and did kept what? myself from my iniquity. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight. Mm -hmm. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. And with the upright man, you will show yourself upright. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the forward, you will show yourself unsavory. Now watch this. Remember how, how David talking. And at what time did he did he uh, come up with this? When he was uh, when Saul saved, when he was saved from Saul. All right. So when he was delivered from Saul, that's when he said that. He was like, man, I've been clean. We just heard about him sinning. Remember, that happened afterwards. Mm -hmm. Right? So he was like, man, I've been clean. Right? Go to First Chronicles. First Chronicles uh, 21. 
First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. Hey, auntie. It's uh, First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Mm -hmm. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go, number Israel from Beersheba, even unto Dan. Mm -hmm. And bring the number of them to me that I may know it. And now watch it. Go, uh, go to 2 Samuel 24. Second Samuel chapter 24, yeah, verse 1. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. So who did this, Satan or God? God. We read Chronicles and say Satan did it, right? Mm -hmm. We read Second uh, Second Samuel 24 and say God did it, right? Yeah. Can both be true? Absolutely. In fact, both are true. Mm -hmm. All right? We gotta change how we look at it. Look at how look at how things play out at that point. In in 2 Samuel chapter 22, David was saying a psalm that he that he came up with after he was delivered from uh Saul. He was like, man, I've been righteous. And at that time, that's true. Right? And after that, you know what I'm saying? That boy sinned. Right? Then the attack was on after that. Then he's like, okay, well, Satan came against him and was like, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and number the people. Right? In itself, numbering the people ain't a sin. But he knew that that would be an opportunity for the most high God to be upset. Like, you know what I'm saying? This wasn't, you know what I'm saying? This wasn't exactly how I wanted this thing to play out right now. So then the most high God plagued the people because of it. Right? That's how the attack goes. That's how it goes. Now you gotta deal with it. Right? Jump on down. This is a verse of, I don't know what verse. Give me verse uh, 15. So the Lord sent the pestilence upon Israel the morning, even unto the time appointed, and there died of the people from Dan, even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. Mm -hmm. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented from the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Stay now your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna the Jebusite. Nothing is without consequence, right? It's all going to come eventually. Right? Always going to be a consequence. So if we look at it, let's go to John chapter... John chapter... Uh, 1 John chapter 2. <coughs> First John chapter 2, verse 1. This is one of the Christians love. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. Mm -hmm. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahushua the righteous. Mm -hmm. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Right? That's what that's for. Because the whole point of this is that you don't sin. Right? That's how David was. David looking like, man, you know what I'm saying? I've been righteous. You know what I'm saying? Most high God has been dealing with me. You know what? He blessed me for being righteous. Because I've been righteous. Right? And he dealt with me according to that righteous. That's why I got delivered. Right? I got delivered from Saul. Saul was trying to get me. He didn't get me. Because I've been righteous. God delivered me with it. And right after that, boom. You know what I'm saying? The boy get caught up. Right? Then after that, you get put in a situation where the most high God is now still trying to set you up, set you up with Satan. And it goes on. That's the consequence. He had to deal with his sons. Right? Two of his sons died. Right? His daughter got raped by his son, right? These are all the things as a consequence that keep going. And now the people go through pestilence because, because of that, it opens the door for God to be like, go ahead and get him, Satan, right? So all these things just keep on happening. It's like a, a snowball effect. And every king after that had to suffer something. Just about, yeah, just about, right? Because then in our law, it tells us that the sins of the father is going to be visited to what? The son. To what generations, though? 
So we're going to be able to watch that too. Like, we're going to be able to watch, like, okay, hold on, you got David who's sinned, right? Then we saw the next generation, how that, how it fell out with the next generation, right? His daughter, his, his two sons. We see that. Then you got, we about to talk about Saul. Grab a, grab a, grab a, grab a, uh, First Chronicles 25. Grab First Chronicles 25. So we can talk about the generation. Cause a lot of people, you look at the book. This is the thing. The book is not is not designed. The Bible is not designed to be like flat out for you, right? It's not a textbook. It's not like a textbook where it's like, okay, let me summarize what happened. Let me re-explain it to you. Let me make sure you understand these points. The book is shoot that thing right past you, easy, easy. It just throw some things together, and you gotta kind of you gotta kind of study and like pull it together and say, okay, wait, this goes with this. And then these two go together. Okay, that makes that. Okay, oh, these three things right here goes with this way over here. And put it together. Be like, oh, okay, now I get it. That's the only way you're going to understand the book. you just reading it. Be like, you know, I'm going to start at Genesis. Read all the way to Revelation. That's good. Because it's going to make you familiar with it. I ain't trying to tell you don't do it. It's going to make you familiar with it. But don't feel like you're going to understand the book by just doing that. At some point, you're going to say, okay, I'm familiar with enough. Now when I read this, it reminds me of that. And now when I read this, it reminds me of that. And then you start have to bringing it together. That's the only way that thing works. What did I say, Grab? First Chronicles 25. Give me verse. Give me verse one. Let me see if that's what I want. Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph. No, 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 not that. Uh, try twenty-eight. It's First Chronicles chapter 28. And David assembled all the princes of Israel and the princes of the tribes and the captains of the companies and that ministered to the king by course and the captains over thousands. Yeah, grab, jump down to about verse 5. This is 2 Chronicles, I mean 1 Chronicles chapter uh, 28 verse 5. And all of my sons... For the Lord has given me many sons. He has chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments at this, at, as at this day. What was, what, was, what was important about what the Most High God just said about Solomon? If he be constant. If he be constant. Right? The Christians would have us believe that the Most High God don't have conditions. That he just, you know what I'm saying, he just got this free love that he handed out and everybody can get it. Right? That thing always comes with a condition. It always does. It's always going to come with like, okay, well, you got it. It's yours now. But, you got to uphold your end of the bargain. It's been like that from the beginning. At no point did it ever stop. Right? Who had the first condition that we can think of? Hey. Abraham. Abraham? What was his condition? Oh, wait, wait, no, Adam. Yeah, Adam, for sure. Adam would be the first one. Yeah. Right? What was Adam's condition? Don't touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? You can add anything. You can add this whole thing. Name the animal. Let me get you a little woman. You know what I'm saying? You can eat of any tree, but not of the tree that's in the midst of the garden. Right? You even have the tree of life sitting out there. But don't touch the tree that's in the midst of the garden. You know what I'm saying? The one of knowledge of good and evil. Now you touch that one, you'll surely die. Right? That's a condition. All this is yours under one condition. Don't touch it. Then you go on. We can fast forward. It's a, it's a bunch of them in between. We can fast forward to, to Abraham. Right? You look at Abraham. He said, you know what? As long as you do everything I tell you to do, and you teach the generations after you to do the same, you my man. And guess what? When he died, he told Abraham's son, Isaac, he said, yo daddy kept all my laws and all my commandments and all my statutes. Abraham upheld his end of the bargain. So guess what? That's how you get to Yahushua. So now God is looking like, see, yeah, this thing is so, you know what I'm saying? This thing is so big, like you have to be able to understand it. So listen. Because Abraham obeyed God and kept his end of the bargain, 
Now, God has to uphold his end of the bargain, which means I have to give Abraham a seed, you know what I'm saying, that will populate the world. Like, that thing has to happen now. I have to bless his seed. So now God, low-key, you know what I'm saying, you know kids say petty. God a little petty, you know what I'm saying, you got to understand. God a little petty, because God is like, well, I'm not about to just make any of your darn seed a seed now. That don't make no darn sense. You know what I'm saying? So God trying to get the best out of his book. He's like, okay, I'm going to give it to you now. But I'm not giving it to Isaac. That don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? Isaac, Isaac's not going to be the one to get it. And I'm not giving it to Jacob. Right? Jacob's not going to be the one to get it. Remember, he got down to Moses. And Moses was like, listen, God, don't kill them all. You know what I'm saying? And then Moses was like, God looking at him like, no, I'm going to kill all of them and I'll make a new nation out of you. Because God was like, I'm not giving it to them. You know what I'm saying? Hey, ain't none of them about to get it. All right? Then Moses messed up. He was like, no, your butt ain't going to see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll let, you, I'll let you see the promised land from this mountain, but you ain't walking over there. So then Moses' butt got to go to sleep. Aaron had to go, darn go to sleep. Right? So you fast forward and you get all the way to David. And David's like, I'll make you a house. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to make you a house. And I'm going to give it to your son. You did enough at this point where I'll look after you. I'll give it to your son. All right? I wait, I'm, I'm not giving it to Absalom. That's crazy. Right? So his son died. Then you get to Solomon. So he gives Solomon a shot. He says, Solomon, you know what? I'll look out for you, boy. <laughs> boy! On one condition. What do you say? Keep my commandments. No, no, no. What do you say, though? Gotta be constant. He said, boy, you gotta keep going. Don't stop. Keep going. I'll look out. That boy started off real good. Well, he started off nice. We gonna read about Solomon next week. Solomon started off real nice. All right? He said, you just keep going. You stay constant. Most of God know what he's doing. He put the condition out there. He know how it's about to play out. But guess what God ain't about to have us doing? He ain't about to have us accusing him. Like, you never told me. Like, no, 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 no. You ain't about to catch me up. I told you, but you knew. Right? He said, no, nah, I tell you what. You constant, you keep going. Because most of God got to prove out now. First, I got to give it to one of Abraham's descendants. Got to come to one of his descendants. That's why all the prophets... You know what I'm saying? They got to come from us. You know what I'm saying? So they got to come from one of his descendants. Then after I get done giving it to one of his descendants, now I got to choose which one is actually worthy of it. So now God got promises on top of promises. So he made a promise to Abraham. Okay, good. You know what I'm saying? Then he made a promise to Isaac. So that, that cuts out all of Abraham's other sons. Then he made a promise to Jacob. That cuts out Esau. Right? So now that thing keep going through all of them. Right? Ends up getting to David. So he said, okay, David, now you got the promise. Okay, great. That cuts out everybody else. Now it's only David's line that can get it. So now I gotta, now God looking like, now I gotta find somebody in David's line. He frantic. He looking like, man, now I gotta find somebody in David's line that's gonna obey my word. Uh, Solomon, you my man? Uh, All right, I'll tell you what, Solomon. Just stay constant, and I, I got you. Myself. Just stay constant, Solomon, I got you. And we're gonna start reading about all this generational stuff. We ain't read how. Solomon had a son, right? So David had issues. Then Solomon had similar issues, but worse. Then Solomon had a son, same issues. And right after that, we got a good boy, right? Third generation. We're going to read it, and we're going to see. We're going to follow that thing along. We're going to be like, oh, look at that. That's a good king, right? That's right after the third generation. That's right after the fourth generation. Right? Then you're going to see somebody going to mess up. And that thing going to go down for at least three generations. Sometimes more. But that thing going to go down to at least three generations. Then sometimes the third or fourth, then you have another good king. You know what I'm saying? That thing play out just how to work. The book don't lay this out for you. There's no summary in the Bible where they tell you, hey, God is going to let this happen and summarize that for you. You got to be able to look at the word and pay attention enough to know that's what it said. And that's exactly what's happening. It don't tell you that's what's happening. You just got to pick up on the clues. That's how the book is laid out. That's why these people make a mess. Because they waiting for the book to just tell them flat out. They looking for flat out stuff. They read the New Testament and they look like, oh, what God is saying. And then they, they dump sales. They get to start reading into it and making up stuff. Just because it ain't flat out enough for them. So they start making guesses and throwing darts at walls. We ain't got time for that. What it say? Put that thing together. If you don't know, just say you don't know and keep studying. That's the best thing for you. I'm sitting here and make something up. Don't make sense. Right? So next week we'll talk about Solomon. 
how Solomon became king. You know what I'm saying? How Solomon had a good little start to him. We're going to see what happened in his end. All right? Then we'll kind of go from there. Because after, after Solomon, what happened to the kingdom? The kingdom was ripped. All right? But we're going to talk about how Most High God already set up the, 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 the framework for it to be ripped before that. All right? So we're going to try we're gonna try to go back because there's some stuff that we skipped. All right? So we're going to have to go back and we're going to have to see how that thing play out. All right? All right, kids, give them what? Let's cut off the camera. Any questions? All right, well, let's pray out.